start my presentation. Kindly confirm if you can see the presentation. Yes, we can clearly. Thank you so much. So uh, today's uh, topic that we will be covering will be Earth and Planetary Science Remote Sensing Projects in Zayed University. So in which we will cover uh, certain case studies that we recently took and which are the published papers in the 2022 in Scopus Index journals, which involves one of the projects related to the invasive species of Prosophis juliflora in the Sharjah area as in case study. After that, we will move, move to the moon to discuss some uh, interesting projects like uh, soon there will be Rashid Rover launch will be there by the UAE. So we explored some of the areas nearby that landing site. So we will explore that part also. Then we will discuss about the Apollo 12 landing site. And then we will discuss some more projects about the Mars uh, related studies and some of the research works carried by the interns here, students here. I will also share that with you. So starting from the research line one, uh, the, which, which was changes in the invasion of rate of Prosophis juliflora and its impact on the depletion of groundwater in the UAE. So Prosophis juliflora is one of the uh, zero type which can thrive in the harsh desert environment. So it has been introduced in the UAE in the 70s to uh, fight the desertification, uh, to have more green, greenery environment. But uh, this species is now uh, creating a lot of, uh, like uh, it, it is creating a lot of issue for the native plant diversity, as well as uh, it's, it's giving, uh, it's, it's taking a lot of groundwater, uh, which is really valuable resource when it comes to the UAE and the semi arid regions. So this is the musket tree, as you can see in Ajman and uh, these are the photos which shows the competition between the invasive species Prosophis juliflora and the native UAE species, which is Cineraria. So if you can see in the top, the middle photo and the right photo, one of the tree is the Cineraria, which is depleting by the action of the Prosophis uh, juliflora grow, growing. So this, uh, we, we took one of the case study of Altala region uh, as uh, we, we seen much growth uh, in happening in this area specifically. And this, this, this been introduced to many places in the world, uh, which been used as a fuel wood and the shelter and for the furniture and many other things. But when it comes to the UAE part, uh, we consider the water as a valuable resource and uh, taking from the groundwater is really impacting. So in this research study, we just wanted to study how much it is impacting the groundwater as well as the growth and its impact on the native, native plant diversity. So as you can see in the figure map, uh, figure two, which is showing the investigated small region of Altala region, Altala area. So these are the satellite images uh, showing uh, the, dif the, the difference between 2005 to 2019 images. So if you can see in the 2005, it was, uh, it, it was being introduced in the 70s. So it was not that much, but when it comes to 2009, 11 and 2014 and 19, and when we compared from the five to 19, it's been uh, increased in a tremendous amount. So these are some of the images which we can see from when we are moving from Dubai to Sharjah to Ajman and in the nearby areas in the desert, uh, in the in the dunes, we can see this type of plant growing, which is Prosophis juliflora. In the right hand side image, you can see the small uh, uh, brown color that is the native plant of the UAE, which is in an area, whereas one of the plant which is growing in between them is the Prosophis juliflora. So we took the meteorological data from the uh, Sharjah airport for the year 2019, because we wanted to see how much it is impacting the groundwater in the 2019 year. First, uh, we visited the site and we took some kind of spectral analysis with the specially designed instrument spectrogoniometer, which is available in the Zaid University and uh, which gives the, uh, which gives the spectral data of uh, from 400 nanometer to 2,500 nanometer and which is highly reliable in terms when it comes to the supervised classification as well as the feature extractions. So this field, field site give us idea about the coordinates and especially that we, we need to take out the specifically the Prosophis juliflora as a feature extraction in the supervised classification training sites. So uh, we, did, uh, we did that and uh, we also uh, downloaded the certain remote sensing data as well as the temporal from 1990s to 2019, such as 1990, we used Landsat 4.5 thematic mapper. In year 2000, we used same 4.5 Landsat. In 2010, we were having the new version of the Landsat, which is Landsat 7 ATM+. Plus. In 2019, we were having Landsat 8. 
So we we map the NDVI of the plants, uh, which is the normalized different vegetation index, which states about the vegetation uh, rigor and the state of the vegetation in that area, if it is healthy or unhealthy. So we divided the region, and uh, as we can see in the NDVI area itself, uh, as a background is the hill shade effect. So how much it is it has been increased from the year 1990 to 2019. So this was, uh, these are the graphical representation, uh, which is showing the Prosophis juliflora in, in the kilometer square uh, as compared to the studied region only for the Altala re in the Altala area. So it's been observed that it's been uh, increasing, like if you see the healthy and the non-healthy in the graphs, it's from, in the, from the year 1990 to 2019, it's been increased a lot. So uh, seeing the image uh, we took is uh, to see the uh, difference between the previous to, uh, to the 1990 to 2010 uh, to see the variation. And we use the image difference algorithm for 1990 to 2000 and then 2000 to 2005, 2005 to 10 and 2010 to 19. So the red color shows the changes, changes happened in that particular area, whereas the no change happened uh, is shown in the blue color which gives us the idea about the kilometer square uh, variation uh, in that area. Before all of this, when we downloaded the remote sensing data from where we are talking, uh, we are taking uh, these kind of informations. First, what we did, we uh, registered the uh, image with the 45 ground control points by taking the quick bird image uh, also, and by visiting the sites that we were having the coordinates of that area. So uh, if you see the variation in the kilometer square, it's been from the 1990, it was only the process acquired area of 0.214 kilometer square. When it comes to 2000 year, it was it increased to 5.21 kilometer square, which was 2334% uh, is in the time of 1990 to 2000. And when it comes to 2019, it been it been increased to 15.99 kilometer square area of the Prosophis juliflora. So so the previous from the 1990 to the 30 year difference uh, shown us that the Prosophis is increased for more than 7370% in the area itself, in the small area of Altala region. So we also wanted to see that how it is impacting and how it is increasing. So we uh, did the topographical mapping of the area and uh, we also found that there is Alhelio farms near the Althala region and the Sharjah National Park, as you can see in the figure eight, which is the digital elevation model, as well as the elevation in the meters is been uh, shown. So Althala region was at the low, uh, at the, towards the low elevation dome from the Alhelio farms and uh, talking to the Sharjah National Park. And uh, here we know about how how was the changes happening from the 1990 to 2019. And after getting the changes, we wanted to see about the evapotranspiration, uh, which tells about the crop water requirement in the area. So as we know that uh, in the UAE, it's a semi-arid environment and uh, the rainfall is considered to be the negligible because it's just in 100 mm a year. So whatever was uh, evapotranspiration happening was happening directly from the groundwater. So this is the monthly reference evapotranspiration being calculated as the musket crop uh, evapotranspiration is the reference uh, using Thontwent method and uh, taking the meteorological data from the Sharjah International Airport. So as you can see in the bar graph, uh, the, the uh, amount of the water consumption being increased in the million meter cube. Uh, and uh, this is the total groundwater used by Prosophis juliflora from 1990 to 2019, which is showing that in year 1990, it just consumed 0.2974 million meter cube of the groundwater, whereas it consumed 22.2197 million meter cube of groundwater in 2019. Here, we are only talking about the Altala region. We are not talking about any other area of the Ajman or the Sharjah. We, it's just a small case study of the Altala. And when we see that Altala region, and uh, when we compare this to 22.2197 uh, million meter cube of groundwater, it's a lot as compared to the small area. So the outcome of this study was that uh, the prosophis distribution has changed drastically after year 2010 and spread over the large area consuming 22.219 million meter cube of groundwater in 2019, which is around 7,372% to that of 1990. And prosophis consumed around 0 0.06 million meter cube of water per day in the invaded area in 2019. So it's been it's been it's been noticed that the, there was Alhelio farms and uh, the at the low at the this uh, Altala was at the lower elevation. So there was there can be a leaking of the water from the agriculture farms from the nearby area of the Alhelio farms and the uh, shard in the national park. So this will help to create the national strategic plans uh, to guide the management and the prevent inefficiency in the future. 
the same study has been published in the Scopus Index Journal uh, in the plants in the MDPI in the year 2022. For more information, you can visit this uh, link mentioned. So after this, I think so uh, everyone is talking about the moon and the UAE's first mission to the moon is after, uh, after completing a tremendous work of the Mars mission. So let's move to the moon. So we investigated uh, morphologically and the mineralogically of the Poseidonius floor fractured lunar impact crater using lunar remote sensing data um, uh, in the year 2021, which has been published in 2022. So uh, as you can see that uh, our study area was uh, in the Serenitatis Basin, as you can see the black rectangle, which is the Poseidonius crater, whereas if you see the white rectangle in the Serenitatis Basin in the figure one, that is considered as the landing site for the UAE Rashid rover and uh, uh, this that will be uh, and this study this Poseidonius crater flow creature is come to the southern part of the of the landing site of the UAE Rashid rover so we wanted to investigate this area morphologically and mineralogically which is important because this lunar fr uh, fractured uh, uh, floor fractured lunar impact crater is special special type of craters which has which are having the radial concentric and the um, and the different uh, properties the polygonal fractures inside the uh, crater floor itself as we see the normal craters when it's it's been bombarded with the normal meteorite impact with the super velocity it's been in the concentric form and there are different kind when we come to the regolith thickness mapping it's in the concentric form but it's in special crater which is having the floor fracture uh, floor fractured and it's being, it can be seen in this uh, in this crater itself in the in this steady area so talking uh, to to investigate it the topographically we drew we, we took the laroc wac data uh, which is the linear recurrence orbiter wide wide angle camera for, for the analysis as well as the lola dem digital elevation model to say the elevation value of the poseidonius crater region so as you can see from the c2f we investigated uh, we investigated the area topographically which is showing that the western rim of the crater is been destroyed by the volcanic activity nearby and these type of crater emerge by the stress uh, about the nearby magmatic intrusions activity happening in the serenitatis basin as uh, this is a part of serenitatis basin and we can see at uh, the simple crater as you can see here and the central peak so we are having total of four peaks uh, in this crater uh, poseidonis crater and uh, whereas the dream can be seen at the elevation as well as the garmin fracture is also there and there is 180 kilometer of the volcanic moat lava is there uh, the channel is there in the sinus foam and the sinus relay is we can see in the in the elevation uh, uh, profile at the e graph so uh, first we needed to map it morphologically so we uh, took uh, the previous literature citations from the portrait etl 2022 and we updated the uh, area using the tectonic and the linear feature maps which has been created using the lro lroc wac and the dem data uh, we also wanted to investigate that the how early is the volcanic activities happening in the area how uh, how how young is that uh, crater and how young is the that uh, moat lava is uh, on the Poseidonius crater. So we uh, divided the unit uh, in the three parts, uh, uh, which one is the Poseidonius crater floor and the Poseidonius crater moat made units. As we can see, the Poseidonius crater floor came as at 3.72 uh, billion years, uh, million, billion years of the age, whereas the Poseidonius crater moat units come to 3.50 and 3.34, which shows that the it was a normal uh, uh, surface area by the magmatic intrusion in the Serenitatis Basin and the stress happening. There was a uh, volcanic channel uh, in the in the crater itself, which created this, which uh, also uh, destroyed the western rim of the crater. And this has been derived using the crater size frequency distribution function, uh, in which we took the Newcomb model uh, as a source, in which we took the craters. Uh, at a particular diameter and uh, using the critic states tool we plotted these graphs so uh, to investigate the diet to investigate the area mineralogically we took the chandrayaan one moon mineralogical mapper data uh, which is having uh, more than 200 bands and which is having 10 nanometer spectral range and uh, having the spectral range from 400 nanometer to 3000 nanometer so as you can see in the figure 5a there is albedo image of uh, moon mineralogical mapper reflectance band at the 5, 1578 nanometer 
whereas uh, b image is having some uh, difference of uh, band ratio which shows the fresh and young surface uh, which exhibits the lower value whereas we created the integrated band depth one micrometer as well as two micrometer in the area which shows about the rock type color composite and uh, which helps us do, to do the spectral analysis using the remote sensing data so here is the rock type color composite of the the region uh, so reflectance spectra collected from the various lithological unit and uh, we also uh, match the reflectance uh, we, we uh, like the spectral analysis with the relapse spectra so uh, here in the a in the b you can see the extracted spectra where a c is the continuum removed reflectance spectra in the region so these are the spatial uh, type of different features present in the uh, crater uh, which is important to investigate to see what kind of uh, floor fractured crater is that so different kind of different spectra collected uh, locations has been mentioned along with the uh, fresh crater spectral analysis and their fresh materials and uh, we also map the uh, band second center versus band first center of the post stretched crater which comes as can be seen in the figure one figure 7d so the outcome of this study was that uh, one of the four central peak ring of the massive contains noritic rich calcium pyroxene uh, which is the mafic pluton uh, which can show that that this uh, is coming from the floor fractured crater type 3 uh, unit and uh, which put this crater in the FFC craters. So the analysis of the reflecting spectra band parameters of the fresh crater in the main unit in indicate the composition of the clelopyroxene, which is the pigeonite. And from the overall observation of this paper, uh, it's been observed that the Poseidonis FF FCC crater, which is having a diameter of 112 kilometers, comes under type 3 FFC, which is wasted with the central peak ring and the mort lava. It is shown that the origin and evolution of the crater occurred due to the stress and strain which were generated due to the adjacent intrusive mafic protonic lithospheric loading of the Serenity's basin formation. So for the future, and this, this study has been published in the Remote Sensing MDPI Journal in the year 2022. Uh, so this study uh, will uh, have some impact and uh, will give an interesting output uh, when the lunar uh, rover, Rashid rover, will uh, go to the moon surface and uh, we will have the real time and the on-site uh, uh, data from there. So it will help us to understand about the moon in the more detailed way in the moon crust as well as the, the, the formations and the volcanic activities happening at the moon surface. Or it was happening before it can give us the idea about our planet also. So uh, as we all know about the Apollo 12 landing site, so uh, one of the study that we carried out is to investigate further uh, what has been not explored before about the Apollo 12 landing site. So we did the chronological and the mineralogical characterization of Apollo 12 landing sites to investigate the, and uh, to divulge the uh, hidden sites about the area. So uh, this is the whole moon, if you can see uh, from the, the top side image. So we just opened the move in the PCS projected coordinate system and uh, we just highlighted the Apollo 12 landing site. So the Apollo 12 landing site was having the mare material, Alpes formation, crater material, Fra Moro formation, mare material, Terra material, and the rock material in the geological unit in the, in the area. So we use a different kind of data, remote sensing data, which is the wide angle camera, narrow angle camera, Kaguya data from the Japanese satellites and the Terra camera. And from where we did the chronological mapping through the crater size frequency distribution and the comparison of the study with the previous age and the observations to bring out the new outputs. We also did the moon meteorological mapper, uh, Chandrayaan, one of Indian satellite uh, uh, interpretation after pre-processing for the spectral analysis through the standard band formation, optical maturity index, iron oxide, and the titanium oxide index to examine the composition of the area. Also, we did the different lithological and spectral parameters, and we try to observe what has been not been observed before. So uh, we first plotted uh, space st uh, standard band ratio from the moon meteorological mapper data by using 750 and 540 and 950 nanometer uh, wavelength ranges. And uh, these are the extended profiles uh, highlighting the lithological features, which is highlight, uh, highland material and the crater lithologies and mare mafic units. As you can see, the red dot is the Apollo 12 landing site as well as the, these are the nearby lithological features happening uh, in the area. So talking about this optical maturity index, which indicates the how young the surface is and uh, in the area. 
so this is uh, this, this shows about the recent event happening or any kind of meteoritic bombardment in the area so this is one of the iron oxide map of the apollo 12 landing site which has been created using the previous uh, uh, previous iron oxide algorithms uh, introduced before to know about the uh, iron oxide iron and the magnesium presence in the area and this is the titanium oxide percentage map uh, of the apollo 12 landing site and uh, this is the uh, representative spectra collected locations overlaid with the LROC WIC and the spectral information plot of uh, Apollo 12 uh, landing site. As we can see, the different uh, points as uh, in the in the in the as you can see in the lower image, uh, different uh, points showing uh, the spectral uh, extraction nearby the area, which shows the ilmenite, ilmenite basalt, pigeonite basalt, olivine-rich basalt, magnesium coronium spinel, and the feldspatic basalt in the area. To investigate the further about and to meet uh, that how uh, reliable is the crater size frequency distribution, we took the three different kind of data from the uh, uh, from the remote sensing images uh, from the wake and the Kaguya TC and the Laroci neck to investigate and to interpret about the um, about the age analysis of the area. This study is to, we we are under the uh, phase of preparing uh, preparing it in the finalization phase. So for the outcomes, uh, we will soon share uh, the the outcomes and uh, as well as the published paper. Now it's time to go to the Mars, as we know that recently uh, Emirates Mars mission been accomplished by the UAE, and uh, it's been a tremendous effort by the UAE community and it's been proud so to investigate further about the mars these are the some of the papers and uh, some of the intern works that uh, been happened in zaid university so uh, other than all the research happening uh, there are some interesting things that the students are doing in the zaid university so what they do after giving training to them proper training about the high risk data which is having the 30 centimeter resolution of the mars surface so they uh, track every possible things happening uh, uh, in on the surface of mars so we know the curiosity rover uh, they are having three different kind of stages the descent phase and the landing and the tracking of that so students after after processing the high risk images uh, using the different kind of platforms that we are having inside the industry arcgis and nb so they especially uh, they try to track the curiosity rover uh, the phases and uh, the things happening there so in the first image as you can see that the rover was descending it, and these are the real images and the parachute been open because uh, the rover or any kind of the, um, the uh, which is which we target from here to the mars it's been going at a really high speed so we need a we need some kind of parachute to slow down the speed when it's entering into the orbit of mars second in the second image you can see that the rover landed and the heat shield can be seen parachute on the surface and the on the lower bottom the zoom image can be seen here which is showing the parachute on the surface these are the tracking of the landers can be seen uh, parachute on the surface can be seen as well as the moving lander and the zoom image can be seen here so these are the interesting uh, projects and after processing pre-processing the high risk images and uh, everything uh, these are the outputs from the students which is really good and uh, uh, the way they are learning software is they are taking the part in the different kind of research activities so coming back to the research uh, this is one of the research recently been carried out uh, uh, for the uh, very big uh, uh, question of the present day mars uh, that whether there is water on the surface of mars or not so this research is been uh, only big for that to understand whether there is some kind of uh, aqueous feature is present there on mars so for that we did atmospheric geomorphological and compositional analysis of the two specific crater on the mars which is asimo and the hell craters so as you can see, this is the image of a two different time period of the same area. Uh, so this uh, is this particular feature is known as recurring slope linear, which is the low albedo feature, and which mainly lengthened during the warm uh, Martian uh, surface, so warm Martian slopes. The main thing, the origin uh, of this is being both uh, there is, is being big debate in the Martian community about this being as a dry uh, process is been is been originated by the dry as uh, some kind of uh, sand particles moving or or as a liquid uh, liquid uh, kind of something uh, like the melting of the ice or 
groundwater seeping is happening there so which is presenting the present day really open big question on the surface of mars so we at zaid university we try to investigate this further so uh, we try to uh, uh, plot the all the uh, rsl activities which is a recurring slope linear uh, on the surface of mars so this is the global distribution of confirmed and candidate rsl sites so confirmed rsl sites are those uh, which uh, which occur in the in the in the summer time period and uh, which sorry which which is already there and uh, in the summer period summer time period it lengthen and in the winter time period it just stop and it reoccur annually whereas the candidate uh, lending uh, candidate rsl sites uh, not having one of these properties so in the b image if you can see it is ls 6.9 degree ls 97.57 degree these are the technical terms for the different kind of season on the surface of mars so in one of the season there is rsl activity can be seen where is in the uh, in the b second part there is uh, there is no any rsl activity and in the third it's been coming and in the fourth it's been uh, lengthening from its own uh, area of that particular time and these images uh, uh, we are having with the high resolution images which is high res data of the nasa satellite as well as the ctx which is context camera which is giving us the resolution of 10 to 20 uh, meter resolution whereas high res is giving giving us 30 cm resolution so uh, as we can see this is the ctx data what i was talking about which is the context camera showing the interior of the crater contains off center depression and analysis of the valley system which means before in the past there were some kind of uh, the valley system was there uh, which is been disappeared now where is different kind of rsl activities has been seen so the red polygon is showing the coverage of the crisma data which is known as the hyperspectral data of the mars surface and uh, we derived the slope map of the study area to see that from how uh, high elevation uh, the slope degree how it is varying and, uh, and the the points the red polygons and the cyan and the black showing the candidate and the confirmed rsl sites in the area so we also derived the geological setting of asimo crater uh, showing the name of the valleys and the morphological parameters like the northern valley and the crater central depression valleys gully channels fennel coves uh, in the detailed way we seen there and we put as in geological setting of the simo crater from the image of ctx talking about another crater because here there is two craters are going on uh, as a comparison also uh, because both the craters are having the rsl activity but there are some interesting insights happening in the both the uh, craters the same thing we did for the hell crater which is showing the context camera images for the hell crater we derived the same slope map area and uh, which so far everything slope and aspect was going uh, similar for the both the areas so this is hell crater geomorphology and its associated ejecta map and the ujobi valleys is indicated by the navy blue colors it's been referred to previous papers so after having after after exploring the area the topographically as well as the geomorphologically we wanted to see how the atmosphere is varying is there any impact on atmosphere is coming or not so as we can see in the a and b image it's uh, it's of the same area but of the different time frame uh, of the one of the north uh, of the summer and one of the uh, one of the uh, another time frame in the c and d is showing the different time period uh, temperature and the water vapor column so we can observe when the temperature is increasing from the c to d the water vapor column is increasing which shows that uh, when the like it's like the evaporation process is happening which increases the water vapor column abundance in the vertical column of the of the area uh, as well as we can see in the a and b there is no aqueous feature is happening there whereas in the b feature there are some aqueous features or the lines are coming the same thing was happening for the hell crater also there was not there was some uh, rsl activities was there but when the temperature was increasing maybe the melting of ice or maybe the groundwater seeping was happening there uh, which increase increasing the length of the rsl features but as we can see in the water vapor column in the asimo crater increased from 0.0013 to 0.0097 uh, kg per meter square which is five times where is in the water vapor column for the hell crater it's just around uh, two times so these images has been uh, derived from the high res data for the both the craters and uh, c and d are the associated atmospheric parameters and which has been acquired at the same time of the acquisition of the high res data for the surface of mars these are some other features uh, observed in the same craters rs in the same craters of the asimo and the uh, hell craters 
which is showing that before there was no activity but after in the same time frame in the same uh, for the same place there is some rsl activities happening so uh, after investigating um, geomorphologically investigating uh, mineral uh, investigating atmospherically we wanted to see uh, how the chemical diversity is very uh, the mineral diversity is varying in the area so we did the iron iron oxide mapping as well as the ice mapping and the chloride mapping for the for the different part of the uh, crater in the in the in the asimo end as well as the hell crater so the overall outcome of the paper was uh, that the marked increase in the water vapor in the asimo crater which is the five times in the before rsl appearance indicates the possibility of the surficial or the subsurface delegations along with the hydrated mineralogy been observed in the SMO crater, which is phyllosilicates. Chlorides are also observed. In Hell crater, the slope and aspect distribution of RSL activity predicted was not consistent with the observation. So hence that can be option uh, that can be explained by some other hypothesis like the granular flow or uh, dry granular flow, any other hypothesis rather than uh, the aqueous as a, as, as, a, as, a, as a liquid flow. Previous experimental study by the researchers suggests that the mineral absorbs the moisture from the environment, which is happening in our area, until the mineral dissolves in the absorbed water and yield a solution, which is supporting the current study. So on the surface of Mars, actually this RSL activity uh, is happening uh, with the different hypotheses. Like we, in this uh, case study also, we were having two craters, but these two craters were having different hypotheses uh, as they are not consistent. But in one of the that it was following the liquid hypothesis, which we call the uh, uh, dry, uh, and the other was following the dry flow or the granular flow material uh, hypothesis. So hence we required some more data to interpret about the global distribution of how the RSL activity or is there really uh, 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 water on the surface of Mars. But with this outcome from that SMO crater, we confirmed that yeah, the that RSL activity was because of the mineral dissolved in the absorbed water and the yield solution. So the same paper has been published in Astronomy Space Science uh, December 2021, which has been published in this year. And uh, uh, yeah. So uh, we also, uh, and this is one of the, uh, like we extended this study of the, to examine the potential of liquid water on the Mars using the Emirates Mars mission data. So we observed uh, the Mela Sashma area because uh, we, we wanted to go for the narrow, but uh, due to because of the data limited constraint, uh, constraints and uh, to go further and we were waiting for the more data. So we were not able to bridge the gap. But whatever the findings we were having, it was uh, good enough to prove uh, the, the, the liquid potential of water on the surface of Mars. And uh, we won the bronze medal in the Emirates Mars mission competition uh, with the students. Uh, the last but not the least the research line is the chronological analysis and the remote sensing of crater on the surface of Mars. So as you can see, the, the Mars surface, as well as we can see the black polygon is 9 million square kilometer area of the Mars. So we wanted to investigate this area for the future manned and unmanned missions uh, by the UAE. So uh, this, this site is uh, interesting as uh, this is near the landing site of Viking 2 and MSL. And this is having the uh, different kind of uh, science team preference for the landing activities to happen there. So in this, uh, uh, we first divided the 9 million square kilometer area from their geological point of view in the two, three, in the three major geological parts, which is the Noetian, Hesperian, and the Amazonian unit. And uh, we wanted to investigate the specific craters that how much they are varying from their uh, geological units. So we took three craters and uh, we investigated uh, as in the, in the hyperspectral form, as well as the geologically and the geomorphologically. So all the three craters were not having any names. So we named them as unmanned crater one from the one of the unit and two and the three from the other two units. So to investigate it topographically uh, to see how the elevation is varying and it is uh, consistent with the elevation uh, study in the area to compare with the different geological units. So we did the slope analysis uh, using the ArcGIS software and uh, we investigated this further by, by dividing the three units in the uh, different kind of uh, Amazonian, Hesperian, uh, their uh, combination. So we divided the units, the major units in the 40, 14 geological units, as well as we, uh, we also uh, like interpreted uh, and uh, mapped the 
rim axis, rim uh, for the crater rim, a carbon axis, flows, and the crater chain bridge relay scarp and the wrinkle ridge in the 9 million square kilometer area. So uh, actually these things are uh, being from the previous literature, which is showing that the Amazonian units is the youngest one happening uh, less than 3.37 uh, GA years, whereas the Hesperian unit is from the 3.37 to 3.71 uh, GA years, as well as, as you can see what, what was happening in, during the time period. In the notion, it was uh, like the basins, Utopia Basin, Hellas Basin, these were uh, forming uh, with the craters and uh, maximum craters uh, were in the pre-Noetian pre period um, when the Mars was, when the Mars formed, whereas the maximum basins were formed during the pre-Noetian to Noetian period and uh, volcanism activities were uh, active during from the early Noetian period to mid-Amazonian uh, period which helps us to in, uh, interpret about the hyperspectral uh, uh, analysis of the particular craters. So to see the age variations in the area, like we already know from the previous literature, it was from 3.37 to 3.71 for the Amazonian Hesperian in the notion. So we did the crater density map of the 9.10 uh, million square kilometer area, uh, which is having the crater diameter for more than 1.5 kilometer area showing the Amazonian Hesperian Noetian units as the red, yellow, and the blue color respectively. So we used the uh, model of Hertman after the Hertman and Newcomb, and uh, we uh, indicated the eras which were following the, the, the crater forms uh, in the, in the, de in the de designed uh, time period. So, and it, it proved uh, that what we were exploring and uh, the area were of interest. So this is the timeline of the major process affecting the mineralogical composition of the Mars and the edges of the large scale compositional units. As you can see, the large impact basins and the volcanic eruptions happening and when the iron magnesium chlorides in the crust started happening and the thin weathering uh, oxidation started from the 3.0 GA estimated from the cratering record. So we, uh, we, we, we uh, explored the craters, the unnamed craters from the three different geological units, uh, specifically for their hyperspectral uh, interpretation using the Prisma data. So uh, we uh, derived first the uh, browse product, which is FEM, MAF, and the uh, HYD, which is hydrology, and, uh, in a, and come to know about a different kind of uh, spectral uh, parameters and the spectral uh, composition in the area. The same thing was for the unnamed crater two and the unnamed crater three. We wanted to do for many craters, but uh, due to because of the unavailability for the coverage of the CRISPR data, it was limited. So we try to do, uh, we try to interpret and uh, to map the as much as we did. So we come to know outcome that the plot derived from the crater states uh, 2.0 software shows that the age of 3.09 plus minus 4, 0.04 is an error for Amazonian period, 3.63 ZGA for Hesperian, whereas 3.73 for the Noetian unit as it is oldest. So Amazonian unit, which is the youngest one, uh, is being majorly composed of the oxides is the primary mineral and uh, been shown there in the spectral parameters, the spectral uh, spectra. And we shows the hematite, bohemite, and the uh, agonite as the primary mineral in the area. Hesperian unit and nymph crater show the signature of carbonatite associated with the silicate alkali rocks that are typically napolitic or uh, melitic uh, and shows the monohydrated sulfates and the melite, elite, and the kaolinite. Whereas the Noetian crater uh, extracted spectra show the diagnostic absorption of clay minerals, suggesting the presence of long term water rock interaction in the period happening. The same paper was published, uh, this, this research has been published in the year 2021 in the Frontier Journal. Uh, for more information, please visit there. So, before moving there, I want to share one of the intern work with you, uh, which has been uh, a pretty interesting uh, where we created uh, the three dimensional modeling uh, by the by the different digital elevation models and uh, where we try to uh, narrow down the resolution and uh, for the future uh, lending point and uh, lending sites yeah let me just share that I think so there is some issue is coming. Can you see the presentation, uh, the video, if it is playing? The image is cut off, uh, Professor. Okay, let me just. Yes, much better. Okay. 
So this uh, was one of the uh, uh, output from the student after training them on the different uh, platforms like ArcGIS and NV uh, by uh, uh, like narrowing down the uh, digital elevation model accuracy. Uh, and uh, this video has been prepared in the synoptic view uh, for the like for the future uh, simulation for the, any kind of the lender and for any kind of the manned or unmanned missions. Let me continue with my slides. So uh, talking about the future project that we are having in uh, Zaid University, uh, we are fabricating, fabricating the space and environmental chamber, which will be the first one in UAE and the very few in the world after NASA and ESA. Uh, so in which we are having different kind of pressure control monitoring, temperature monitoring, as well as the different kind of uh, uh, gaseous interaction with the sample. So we can, there can be different kind of astrobiologically remote sensing studies can be done in the chamber. It will be like, uh, having the on-site data of the surface of Mars. So, so far we had achieved this uh, much of, uh, like it's been under vacuum. Uh, we are trying to achieve the pressure and the temperature uh, by passing the nitrogen gas throughout the, throughout the uh, chamber. So uh, this is one of the potential thing that we are having in the Zaid industry. And uh, soon we will be exploring many projects uh, which is happening and uh, to, to validate the results that we are producing from the remote sensing data images and uh, to validate those results uh, in the Mars chamber. And we are also trying to see uh, if there is any possibility to uh, grow any kind of plant like zero types, like the process juliflora that we were having on the Mars surface for uh, future uh, times. So we, uh, we are trying to create the vacuum and then we will put the, put the seeds and the, you know, and the plant and we will see, we will observe spectral, spectrally and uh, by, uh, by the various means that how the plant is behaving, if it is growing or not, and uh, how, what are the things we can, we can put uh, from the different point of view. We are also having the spectrum, spectrogoniometer, uh, which is like, which will give us the physical and the mineralogical configuration at the different angles. So it is like uh, we are having our earth or any kind of planet. So we are having the two arms, like the satellite and the source, which is moving at the different angles. So to know about the mineral of a particular pixel or a particular uh, small, uh, small, uh, like small soil uh, particle. So it can give us the information about that from zero degree to 360 degree, whatever the type of composition and whatever type of the physical things we are having. So, so far we had achieved uh, the, um, uh, the initial experimentation as well as the initial reading has been already been produced with this. And now we are on the stage of taking it further and to produce some good results uh, with this one.
So in the hyperspectral laboratory uh, in the in the Zaid University, we are having space and environmental chamber in house. We are having spectrogoniometer in house that I shown you in the last slide. We are having the hyperspectral camera, which is really high resolution uh, from uh, till the thousand nanometer. It can cover a big image, and we can uh, which is re which gives about the spectral information of every small pixel of the area. We are also having spectro radiometer uh, of, of the Spectra Vista Corporation, which is having uh, having seven hundred sixty eight bands at a really narrow uh, resolution uh, to uh, to see the spectra of the area and uh, to validate the remote sensing uh, studies and many other things. We are having another spectro radiometer for the students' projects and uh, which is having the different uh, nanometer uh, wavelength ranges as compared to the spectro radiometer 768i. And we have high performance computers in the lab and uh, talking about the softwares, we are equipped with the ArcGIS and NV. And we are also having JMP Pro software for the statistical analysis as well as the Grams AI, Mathematica. Recently, we also introduced terahertz analyzer and the multispectral 3D scanner for the uh, phenological study of the plants. And uh, so this is our team uh, led by Professor Paris Hawari, who is the Dean of the Zaid University and the co-lead by the, uh, who is the co-supervisor of the project, Dr. Yusuf Nazal, who is professor and the chair of the department and the assistant professor, Dr. Iman B. Salem, lab technician, Cizo Xavier and myself, Manish. And uh, we are having support from uh, the funding support from the U.S. Space Agency uh, from uh, Dr. Fatima Laidrus. Uh, so, yeah, thank you so much. I hope uh, I didn't bore you and uh, it was good. So these are the email IDs of Professor Faris Hawari and myself for any kind of future collaborations, opportunities or any kind of uh, projects that we need to carry out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manish, for your very informative, very beneficial presentation. I believe it's time for our audience to ask questions. Uh, kindly raise hand if you have any inquiries. You may also state comment, uh, questions in the tab, the Q&A tab as well. So actually, I can see some question and answers in the tab. So from the Yasir Othman, sorry to mispronounce wrong, uh, the question is, can you share the sources of lunar remote sensing data? Actually, all the papers which is published, we are having all the sources uploaded, but mainly we are using a lunar reconnaissance orbiter data, LOLA data uh, from for the DEM and the Chandrayaan-1 moon meteorological medical data. We are downloading these data from the planetary data system, uh, Orbital Data Explorer, which is PDS ODE website, uh, which is uh, publicly available data. Uh, and uh, other question about the reference surface for the DEM of the surface of the Mars of the moon. Actually, when we are uh, dealing with the, the real time and uh, for some kind of manned and unmanned missions, we are creating uh, from the uh, projected coordinate system of our own Mars, uh, of our own uh, uh, reference system. Uh, uh, through the ArcGIS software, uh, where we can define the projections as well as the coordinate system also. So we are doing that. Actually, we are also having, uh, previously I worked with the China's lunar uh, programs for the Chang'e 5 and Chang'e 4, where we already uh, defined a lot of uh, uh, highly, uh, uh, highly uh, precise and accurately uh, reference systems. So we are using those uh, to have this, meter accuracy in our digital elevation models as well as vertically as well as horizontally. So the moon and Mars uh, satellites are, uh, Mars and moon satellites are pre-processed using the ArcGIS software and the uh, NV software. So we are having different kind of uh, pre-processing uh, uh, steps. So I think so if you are interested, please go through the, uh, through the, uh, the shared paper links or can you, you can email us. Uh, we will be happy to uh, sh share the things with you. And uh, I think so the, those are the questions so far. Yes, I believe you, you replied to all the inquiries below. Uh, if there's any other questions, no hands, all right. So thank you, Professor. We come to the end of today's webinar. Thank you all for your kind interest. It's, it's Manish, uh, it's Mr. Manish, actually, it's been a long, it will be a long journey for me to become a professor. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, and sometime soon. Hopefully we'll have you again as well. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We do have a hand from Fatma Anwar. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, yes, Fatma, please. Uh, hello, sir. Hello. Hi, uh, sir, uh, I had some uh, queries uh, regarding. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can. I, please, go. Okay. Um, is there any research uh, studies or opportunities? Uh, going on related to the uh, Mars or uh, Sun because I am a, I, I am actually a PG student so I was uh, actually interested in the uh, field for backing up uh, this research. Actually right now in Zayed University we are having more than 20 research lines uh, continuously going on uh, related to Earth remote sensing like the mangrove studies as well as for the Mars for the future manned and unmanned missions we are carrying out for different part of the Mars and uh, to for the advancement of the tools and everything for the moon right now we we are having a, like a different chroma crater which is a specifically distinct from the different moon uh, features so we are having uh, research lines continuously going on inside the university so sir uh, we can uh, directly uh, apply in your um, uh, it will be science. great uh, it will be great uh, like uh, yeah please send us an email and uh, we can carry forward from the uh, from for the projects Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. We came to the end of today's webinar. Thank you all for your kind interest in attending, and we look forward to have you at our upcoming events as well. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Manish. Thank you.